Again, what? he likes to change it to a woman and fuck guys. <laughs> <laughs> In the worst sex scenes. Welcome to the scariest cut. <laughs> I'm Matt. And I'm Tom. And we're joined by our producer, James. And tonight we're talking about 1979's Phantasm. That was done in studio. Damn. (laughs) All right, so I'm going to read you a little synopsis written by the scariest cut on this film. Ready? Let's hear it. Residents of a small town start dying under strange circumstances. Two brothers and an ice cream man discover that a tall man, who's also a hot blonde... And also might be an alien from another planet, but is definitely the town mortician is behind the deaths. They must work together to take down the tall man and his army of Jabberwockies. <laughs> That's what I got from this film. What about you? No, that was pretty accurate. Yeah, I was I was thinking very similar. Mine was a bit more crude. Well, now I want to hear yours. Mostly just about how an alien disguised as a creepy grandpa <laughs> to a hot woman and starts fucking and murdering people <laughs> that and then turn them into dwarfs yeah oh you know, then yeah i guess a kid his brother and an ice cream man have to stop him this is a fun film uh people love it yeah this has um become a cult classic i definitely in the last 20 years 30 years now for a movie came out in 79 yeah. It's so weird. I know, because this uh, well, it did actually very well in the box office, surprisingly. Very, yeah. Because this is a super low-budget movie. Three, 300000 300000 and ended up making... Well, Wikipedia has like two things. It either says $22 million or like $6.8 million, which is a drastic difference, but still a big still, increase. I'll take either one of those. Um, that's what I will give this movie credit for, was this was um, low-budget. Independent years. film. Independent. I mean, this guy. Um, God damn it! I looked up his name so much. Dan. Don. Don. Don Coscarelli. Coscarelli did like everything. Oh wrote, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrote directed, literally everything. Produced, uh, edited this movie, did the cinematography. So I'm like, all right. There was a lot of work put in by this guy. This all came from a dream, right? That he had. Yeah. Mm. Which. Oddly, was mostly about the sphere, right? It was called the Sentinel, actually. Ooh. Ooh, see, there's some trivia. But going back to the low budget, so it actually went over budget, and he would film on the weekends, and he would rent all the equipment just for the weekend, then bring it back on Monday. That's also got to be weird when you're like, just a week of just waiting to film your movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like having to get everyone back into that yeah. like, feel. Right. It also probably explains some of the acting, but... <laughs> hey, <laughs> what do you mean? It wasn't. It was actually better than I was expecting, mostly. This film has a lot of strange sim- cinematography, a lot of yeah. weird little... I don't know. How do you even explain it? Surrealist. It reminds me a lot of yes. David Lynch. Okay. Um, just like dream elements being thrown in. Dream, dream elements, that's for sure. Yes. Um, by the way, we're probably going to spoil some stuff. Uh, the oh, movie came out in 79. Definitely going to spoil some stuff. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. But uh, <laughs> Is it time for the scariest cuts? It's time for the scariest cuts. All right. Oh boy. Well, with this film, I don't know. I don't think there's too many scariest. Hold on. I'm just going to wait for get, Matt. Can we get a little ASMR on that? Why don't you just do it right in the mic? We can just cut this right out. Oh, cut oh this no, out. it's not getting cut out. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you all topped off? I just need some water. Well, you get the sizzle mm. on the mic. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> That's for you. Oh, <laughs> man. Our first episode's going to be a gem when we look back at this one years from now. <laughs> hey, we're adding everything in here. We got ASMR. Oh, God. So, Scariest Cuts. Um, Are we this, doing honorables first? We're definitely going to do honorables, because okay. we don't know what each other's Scariest no. Cuts are. I'm not even fully decided on my honorables. Okay. Um, there's one scene that I that stands out to me in particular. It's an honorable mention. Um, it's when Michael is walking through the town, and he looks across the street. Oh, uh, yeah. And he yeah. sees the tall man walking towards him but on the opposite side of the street right. he's actually walking towards Reggie who's an ice cream man 
Uh, yeah. And just the way they shoot it in slow motion right, with the right. music. I, I do love the music in this film. It's it's great. Oh, it is a, it. It's a great. That theme is. So it was actually inspired by Goblin. It was uh, really? Suspiria, obviously. That yep. makes sense. Perfect yep. sense. But, yeah, that scene is very cool. He turns and looks right at Michael. And he does, I don't know, he's like grunting and stuff. But uh, you see like the, not the steam from the ice cream yeah, truck or yeah, whatever yeah. frig it is. Yeah. But... I don't know, there's something frightening about that scene, like something's going to happen, but nothing does. So, obviously he's got telekinesis, but he has, I think, telepathy, so when he stopped, it was like he picked him. It's like he knew he was there. Yeah, he knew he was there, Mm -hmm. and it was so unexpected, and then he turns like, it's slow and suspenseful. Mm -hmm. Creepy. I like your things. I feel like those powers, though, were not explained in this movie. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, how are you going to yeah. explain that in 79? You know, they didn't have CGI and all that stuff. I so. know this True. does have, like, what, five sequels or something? Yeah. I know uh, Angus Scrim passed away in, like, 2016 or something. Yeah. yeah. And that was right after the last one was made. Hmm. Um, so I'm assuming there was a lot more explained about the tall man, because we <laughs> don't get much in this. Right. Yeah. But I think this, it's deliberately low on exposition because it has that kind of surreal mm-hmm. enigmatic kind of vibe yeah so that's one of mine what do you got um so, so pulling at straws here um there's that <laughs> scene where jody first goes i think it's like the first time he goes to explore the morgue after like shit starting to pop off he's in a basement uh, like yeah. it turns on a light and as the light's like swinging you can see one of these, and I know everyone else has described them as the same. They're Jawas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I guess. Yeah, he gets, Jody gets mm-hmm. attacked by one. This scene is then made crazy because he takes a shot at this thing <laughs> with a <the> gun <laughs> just by aiming the gun over his head. <laughs> Like, I know you have no visuals, but he's just yeah, doing yeah, this, yeah. and I'm like, oh, yeah. There's yeah. a good chance you <laughs> so. Yeah. But yeah. he nailed it. <laughs> Yep, you got lucky there. But I do think that was like that reveal of like the light swinging, and then you just see this hooded figure, which it's standing on something because it's bigger than him when it jumps. All right. Cool. Good scene. Oh, I got to follow it up yep, with. You got to go a, for one more. <laughs> one more. Um, um, before the big reveals. There is another cool scene that's almost like the first one I mentioned, um, where Michael, his brother's like get the hell out of here go to a friggin antique shop get him out of here right mm. so uh he's in the antique shop with uh, these yeah. two random girl characters i don't know why they sent him into town into an antique shop but whatever <laughs> they, they could afford to film there <laughs> yeah that's exactly why yeah, this only has like three sets yeah really but michael's looking through some pictures and he comes across one picture of the tall man and just the way they film it like at first it's a picture but then all of a sudden there's some movement to it and the tall man like turns and creepily and looks at michael and uh i don't know i thought that was another cool moment i just i love the Uh, i love these little i don't know scenes like that where there's it's just interesting that's the fun thing like watching these old because 79 like it wasn't too much that was like a Mm. weird time for horror yeah. Like some of the biggest horror came out around then, but, like, to see what... Like, we've seen that more recently, like, the It remakes. Like, they do that kind of stuff. Yeah, it, it was it was probably experimental, like, at the time. Uh, and it just, it just came through with, like, an eerie feeling to it. I do have one honorable mention. I, it's not going to be your scariest cut, so... Okay, let's hear it. All right, so in the beginning, when the Lavender... I think it's the Lavender Girl... The yeah, one that the like the tall man, like lady t- in lavender. I yeah, think yeah, 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 yeah. The tall man. Yes, yes. <laughs> the so hot, I, yeah. Again, what? he likes to change it to a woman and fuck guys <laughs> <laughs> in the worst sex scenes. <laughs> what a way though to build an army of minions. <laughs> also to ruin someone's life, like as you're dying, you realize this girl. Is oh an yeah, old you get a man. You get the bait Aww. and switch. The bait and switch. <laughs> Do you think he finishes right before they die? You just got catfished. <laughs> um, yeah, but that scene in the beginning with Tommy, and that's another thing you would never expect. Like it flashes. Tommy. Between... Yeah. 
but um, a lot of Tommy's shout in horror out to movies. Tommy Jarvis and who is the other one in uh, oh, uh, Tommy <clears throat> oh, fuck from uh, Doyle but yeah that, that scene like just it it, uns- it was unsettling right at the beginning of the movie yep and it sets a precedent mm-hmm. for all the crazy stuff that's just gonna follow all the like the abstract things and mm-hmm. it's just like I don't know. It definitely sets the tone right. for the entire movie. Right. And the movie's 90 minutes or 89 minutes. It was originally going to be three hours. Yeah, that's what fucking baffles me. Because well, I know I had read uh, a lot of that footage was lost. Because that was yes. the last thing yeah, I was yeah, saying yeah. earlier. Something that confused me. Because this lost was originally footage? three yeah. hours. They lost a lot of that footage. Oh and my then God. some of that footage was actually used in like... The next one, right? Four, I think oh, it was the, the fourth, fourth one. one. Well, okay. That would make sense why this movie is the way it is. Because it's just all pieced together. But right, I'm also right. like, how is this three hours when so much of this movie feels like unnecessary scenes? <laughs> <laughs> well, they they said it was, or Don Coscarelli said it was a lot of character development. But I feel like that would probably take away from the horror aspect if you're like building these characters up too much. I could have used a little more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because there are yeah. times I'm like, what yeah, the true. fuck is going on? Yeah. I'm like, he's an ice cream man. Who wears a leather vest, plays music. I know he was actually a musician. Yeah, that was a he good wrote, song. Yeah, yeah, that he a wrote that song. That jam, which explains why it was like a couple. <laughs> it's at least a minute of them just playing music. Just so jam. out of place in like. Yeah. But they were just like everything's out of place. Were, in this yeah, movie. I know it, it fits because I think he was actually friends with uh, the director. Yeah, which is why he got that, and he was probably like, "Play some of your music." Oh. He actually made that character off of his friend. Um, so Reggie was was supposed to be that affable, like everyday guy that everyone can relate to. No one can relate to that haircut. <laughs> <laughs> that, that. <laughs> holding on to that mullet. He's got a weird looking mullet. It's like a pony he, tape. He's got this it's vest. So yeah. He wears a vest with like a bow tie. I'm like, what is this guy? What's his outfit? And he's like the old school ice cream man, but then wears a leather vest because he's still a musician. I thought, you know that uh, horror movie, The Ice Cream Man? I was wondering if that was like... I heard comparisons, because this actually came out before that, and he looks very he similar. Looks, he does. So I looked it up to see if the character's name from that other movie is Reggie. It's not, but that would have been cool. Like a little... Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, yeah, that, yep. him wearing that, it kind of takes away from a bit of that ending scene, because him, he just looks stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... It's time for our scariest cut. All right, we all have the same one, right? <laughs> um, maybe. I, I piece mine together maybe a little differently than you do. So I assume it's the the orb. It, it's the, the sphere. Sentinel. Sentinel. Mm-hmm. As James said. Yeah, this was um the only because this is my first time actually fully watching this movie, but I had seen this scene growing up like a bunch. Like my dad showed me this scene. It is the most, to me, the most effective scene. Also, these sphere things are so fucking random in this movie. Mm. Floating. Which makes more yeah, sense I mean. when you realize this is basically the dream it was based off of. Mm-hmm. But it's such a brutal scene. Comes around the corner. Michael bites this guy's arm, who's, like, choking him mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, but also, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> I don't know, but but if you know, if you noticed after he gets hit with that thing, he bleeds so I thought he was pissing his pants, right? Because you see yellow. Mm-hmm. That could be the yellow blood. I know, though. but he had some straight up red blood. I think yeah. he pissed his oh, pants. Oh, he did. Yeah, that's true. Right? You're seeing that red yeah, blood shoot. Yeah. Out. So like, who is this guy? <clears throat> that's I think, weird. I, yeah, I, I didn't feel think feel like that. Angus Scrim just had to hire someone. The tall man needed an employee. To <laughs> I run. know there were all their caretakers in there. It was another I one, I mean, it, it is a cemetery, so some people yeah. have to be working it, I guess. Yeah, it's a funeral. I don't know why this guy was so aggressive with this kid, but... Yeah. Yeah. He got his, because, yeah, that ball sticks in, and it's like a drill. It starts drilling. It's a oh, good it's effect. Crazy. Well, you yeah. see the reflection, too, through the sphere, oh, which is yeah, pretty cool, yeah. so it's like... Yeah. Which, I actually, yeah, the, another thing I heard, which is pretty fun, is the way they shot this is they had... um. Oh, I read Professional this too. Professional baseball players throw these spheres off camera, and really? then they would reverse the shot, and that's how they like would show them flying. That's strange. I heard they were throwing it at first, and then uh, uh, like that didn't work or something. Then they stuck it to the head, 
of the guy and uses like a string to like pull, pull it, it off. I feel like that makes more sense in this shot because it's very like direct. The first it's, part it's, of that sequence looks so cheesy. Oh yeah, <laughs> but it's, just, it's what they. I mean, it was seventy nine. It it worked mostly. But then the tall man chases after Mike. That's my scariest yeah. cut. So that that's the part that I think is scary. Because Michael turns and he... What the heck does he say? He's like, um. Like that, that's his <laughs> yeah. big line. And then he's like, oh, shit. Right? And then yeah. they do this, like, this dance, this walk. Right? They each take a step towards each other. Yeah, yeah. And then Michael takes off. And then there's this cool tracking shot. Right, right. And like you feel like you're you're there with him and he's about to grab him. So like that is yes. that is scarier to me than this like the orb was like cool gore and stuff, but yeah. um but that's like, the scary one. Yeah, um but in Angus Grimm, who like says six foot four yep. against this kid yeah, chasing him. I'm like, like oh. the size difference is very intimidating. Yeah. If he had his boots on, he would be six seven. Jeez, yeah. I need to give me some of those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So did they put the like the little stilts in his or whatever the the lifters yeah, in yeah. his boots? But, so that made him like six seven. But I think like another thing I want to add to this, the creepiness is the the whole aesthetic of that like marble mausoleum, and pure white pretty much, and then you get this like metallic ball, and then they're just running through the corridors. It's just a uh, I don't know. It's, it is very like dreamlike. Mm-hmm. It is. I actually kind of wish there was more of that in this movie. Well, you know mm-hmm. why it's dreamlike? Let me spoil this fucking movie for you. Because <laughs> at the end, it's a goddamn dream, or is it? Or the whole movie is a dream. I don't know. Yeah, it, the ending is um, very confusing. Very to me. weird. But it, whatever, it's, it's interpretive, it right? Like throws me off because I'm still like, and I'm assuming this is explained in the sequels more. Yeah. Because also I know certain characters come back. But um, we're only talking about this film, so yeah. for what this was when it first came out, weird ending. It's a dream, but then all of a sudden the tall man's there again and pulls Boy. Mike. Boy, yeah, Boy. Right there, there, yes. He also, uh, I couldn't help but notice this. It had a haircut before they filmed that scene because <laughs> his hair is completely different. He's got a nice short. Uh, cut there at the end. Do what he, he can grow his fingertips back. He can cut his own hair. He can do yeah. whatever he wants. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, can we also talk about his fucking severed finger turn into In- insects? <laughs> the shittiest looking. A gigantic fly. fly thing? I don't know what that was. That was another of uh, Don Cos- Coscarelli's phobias. He had like this thing of uh, insects. They borderline turned into a Three Stooges. Yeah. <laughs> Scene of them just <laughs> like fighting with this jacket. <laughs> Yeah, the freaking jacket. Uh, so that wraps up our episode of 1979's... Phantasm. Thank you for listening, watching, consuming this content, however you do. Definitely don't like and subscribe. Yeah, we're not at every app <laughs> at the scariest cut. Definitely not, so don't do it. Don't look this up. Uh, we'll see you next time when we talk about... The, the scariest, scariest cut. cut.